Welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences Graduate Induction and Welcome Ceremony. You will now hear from our Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research, Dr. Delroy Chavez. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Delroy Chevers, the Associate Dean of Graduate Studies and Research in the Faculty of Social Sciences. I would like to welcome all our new graduate students to the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, and in particular, to the Faculty of Social Sciences. Today, our induction ceremony, we have a very short program. You will be hearing from the following persons. Professor David Tennant, who is the Dean of the Faculty, Ms. Melissa Foster, an MSc economic graduate student who graduated with distinction, Professor Marcia Roy, Director of Graduate Studies and Research, Ms. Georgia Bennett, Assistant Registrar for the Office of Graduate Studies and Research, Ms. Dana Morris Dixon, Chief Marketing and Business Development Officer, the Jamaica National Group, now on secondment as Advisor on National Risk Assessment at the Bank of Jamaica. Please do stay with us. Thank you. Now, a welcome from our Dean, Professor David Tennant. Faculty of Social Sciences graduate students, welcome to the 2021-22 academic year. We're excited that you chose to be a part of the UWE and Faculty of Social Sciences family and to pursue your graduate degree with us. As you start this academic year, the world seems to be in a state of flux. As I have watched and read the international and local news over the past couple of weeks, my head has been spinning. The images coming out of countries like Afghanistan and Haiti are unbelievable, and the statistics emanating from parts of Africa and the Caribbean are shocking. As a human being, I look on at these issues with a great deal of concern and empathy. But as a social scientist, I observe all that is going on in the world with a great deal of intellectual interest. There is nothing that is happening in our country, our region, or the world at large that is not either explained by or solved by a better and deeper understanding of how human beings behave and interact with each other. You are starting your graduate journey as social scientists at a time when advanced studies and research in social sciences has never been more important or exciting. It is in this context that we welcome you to the Faculty of Social Sciences as intellectual inquirers as fellow knowledge seekers who will delve deep with us into societal issues that we face, who will work with us to find sustainable and equitable solutions. As graduate students, you have our full support. Our faculty is equipped with the online systems you need to smoothly navigate your learning. In addition, our knowledgeable FSS staff, lecturers and graduate advisors are here to assist you in becoming acquainted with the resources available to you and to provide information to ease your transition into graduate school. As you go through this academic year, I want you to act now by keeping these points in mind. A. Acknowledge your strengths. These will work in your favor and help you to find your passion. C. Correct your weaknesses. Don't hide them or try to hide from them. Seek advice and ask many questions from trusted colleagues, professors, and professionals in your field of study. T. Transform your thinking. At the graduate level, think of yourself as being more than just a student. You're a professional and a scholar. N. Never give up. Do not be afraid to call on others for support. Develop friendships with your classmates who will help you stay on track. O. Organization is key. Always remember to set your goals and prioritize your tasks. Do not hesitate to say no to people when you need to focus on your studies or your rest. W. Workplace readiness. Approach your studies as though you are already a professional in your desired field. Seek opportunities that will help you to be viable and to be a great candidate for your desired job. And finally, let me end by strongly, strongly encouraging you to make integrity the foundation of all that you do. Students, let me warn you, don't ever find yourself having the label of fraud or cheat attached to your name. This is a label that regardless of how sorry you are for what you have done, regardless of how much good you have done since, it is a label, a stain that is very, very stubborn. 
Your reputation is the only thing of real value that you have. Cherish it. Protect it. Build it. Because if you lose it, some people will never give you the chance to regain it. Integrity, students, is the hallmark on which your reputation of greatness will be built. Take the high road of discovery and learning. Be intrigued and inspired as you equip yourself to be graduate-level social scientists, ready to tackle the societal issues which will shape the future of our world. Welcome again to the Faculty of Social Sciences. Now we'll have Professor Marcia Roy, Director of Graduate Studies and Research at UWI Mona, bringing us greetings. The University of the West Indies Mona and the team in the Office of Graduate Studies and Research would like to welcome you or welcome you back to UWI. I'm Marcia Roy and I'm the Director of Graduate Studies and Research on the Mona campus. This graduate degree that you are about to commence will probably set the trajectory for your career for the next 10 to 20 years. Of the 60 or so tertiary institutions that operate in Jamaica environment, your UWI is ranked number one in the Caribbean, in the top 2% of universities in Latin America and the Caribbean, and in the top 3% of universities globally. So you are in the right place. UWI not only distinguishes itself from these other tertiary institutions, but by its offering of graduate programs, including our research degree, we also make a very significant impact globally. Most of you in your graduate degree will be required to do a research methods course, a research project, or maybe you're doing a research degree. Research is important because it is through research that innovations will be developed to solve tomorrow's problems today. And at UWI, many of these innovations are developed by our graduate students, whether it's solution to alleviate the ravages of climate change or cleaning our oceans to ensure the health of our marine environment or strategies to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. But what the current pandemic has taught us is that research alone is not enough or innovation alone is not enough. In December of 2019, it was clear that a novel coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, which causes a severe acute respiratory syndrome, was spreading rapidly international. Within a few weeks, the COVID-19 virus was sequenced and vaccine development commenced. Coronavirus outbreaks were familiar to the global scientific community with SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2012. About a year later, in December of 2020, a vaccine was developed and approved for emergency use. We all breathed a sigh of relief because a solution for the COVID pandemic was underway. But what is obvious nine months later is that research alone is not enough. The vaccine hesitancy and resistance that is being experienced by many globally suggests that it is not only important to use research to develop innovative solutions, but it's also paramount to have buy-in from the stakeholders and the populations that will need to access these innovations. So like the UWI AAA strategic plan, this pandemic has taught us that any solutions developed to solve humanity's problem must be accessible to the populace, it must be agile, that is responsive, and it must be aligned to the needs of humanities. Welcome to UWI, welcome to, you, to Mona, welcome to graduate school where we will innovate, inspire, and integrate. Now we'll also have greetings from Ms. Georgia Bennett, Assistant Registrar at the Office of Graduate Studies and Research at UWI Mona. Good day everyone and welcome to the University of the West Indies. My name is Georgia Bennett and I'm the Assistant Registrar in the Office of Graduate Studies and Research. One of our main functions in the Office of Graduate Studies and Research is to ensure that the university's graduate regulations are adhered to and all our programs are governed by these regulations. For this presentation, I will be highlighting the regulations governing the GPA marking scheme. 
As you may be aware, effective this academic year, that is the 2021-2022 academic year, all our new graduate students pursuing postgraduate certificates, postgraduate diplomas, taught masters, and professional doctorate programs will fall under the GPA marking scheme, while our continuing students, that is students admitted to the university prior to the 2021-2022 academic year will continue under the old marking scheme. The marking scheme highlighted on the screen, to my right is the GPA marking scheme, and to my left is the old marking scheme. It should be noted that at the graduate level, 50% is the pass mark, and the letter grade associated with that is the letter grade C. Now, the regulation states that candidates are required to pass either the coursework or the written examinations and coursework. Where a candidate fails a course, he or she will be required to repeat the fail components of the course or the entire course. Where a candidate fail any component of a course that counts towards the final grade, whether the coursework or final examination will be deemed to have failed the course and will be assigned the grade FC, which means fail coursework or FE, which means fail exam even if they have obtained an overall mark of 50% or higher. And this is what the regulation is referring to. If you obtain an overall grade of 50% or greater, and you fail a component of the course, you will be assigned a letter grade FE or FC, depending on the component that you have failed. The regulation goes further to say candidates who have obtained an overall mark below 50% in a course will be assigned a grade F1, F2, or F3 based on the overall mark achieved. So for example, you receive in a course 35% and that's your overall mark. The letter grade that you will be assigned will be a F2. The regulation also states that candidates must reach the threshold semester GPA of 2.00 or above to continue in the program. Academic standing will be based on the semester GPA. If a candidate's semester GPA falls below 2.00, the candidate will be given a warning in the first semester. If the candidate's GPA falls below 2.00 for two consecutive semesters, they will be required to withdraw. Under the GPA system, the class of award will be as follows. Distinction will be awarded on the basis of a program GPA of 3.70 or above. Merit will be awarded on a on the program on the basis of a program GPA of 3.00 to 3.69. Pass will be awarded on the basis of a program GP of 2.00 to 2.99. And for our graduate certificates program, these programs are not eligible for distinction. In the case of professional doctorates, the following conditions apply for high commendation to be awarded. One, a GPA of 3.70 or above in the courseware component. Two, no failure in any individual course. Three, high commendation for the thesis component. And it should be noted that students pursuing a Master of Philosophy or a Doctor of Philosophy program, these programs do not fall under, under the GPA system. Our regulations booklet with these information I have just highlighted to you is not yet available. As soon as it becomes available, it will be sent to you via email. Ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome to the University of the West Indies and all the best in your studies. And now a student testimonial from Ms. Melissa Foster, a graduate from the MSc Economics program. 
on beginning this new journey i know it's going to be worthwhile and you're going to have a lot of fun however with each new level comes new challenges these challenges will require a lot of effort a lot of focus and a lot of dedication i personally found this out during my first week of school one of my lecturers said that we're already several pages behind but don't be perturbed by these challenges this is where your support team comes in handy remember guys if you want to go fast you go alone but if you want to go far you go as a team this team will include your family your friends your classmates and even your lecturers okay so this means forming study groups practicing together even all nighters whatever is required you have to put in the work also you have to show up for classes you have to show up for office hours you have to read ahead you have to revise even contact your lecturers outside of class if you're really just not getting a concept but you can do it okay you can do it and you will do it just never never give up you should take a break when necessary but keep pushing okay and have a lot of fun and i know you'll all be great and remember guys nothing beats prayer okay don't forget to pray and put god first And now for our guest presentation from Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, advisor to the Bank of Jamaica. Professor David Tennant, Dean, the Faculty of Social Sciences, other leaders and faculty of this esteemed faculty, administrators, and of course, our graduate students. I thank you for this kind invitation to speak to you at this orientation session. It is difficult for me to say no, to a request from this faculty because it has been so instrumental in my personal development. And it is even harder to say no to Professor David Tennant and Dr. Lisa Vassiani, two of the nicest people I, I have ever encountered. Having had a chance to work with Prof Tennant for the first time on the Education Commission, I know that the faculty is in good hands. He's not just a good academic, but he is committed to the students and to the university. He is a fierce advocate for evidence-based policy formulation and is just overall a great leader. So I'm so happy that he is Dean and I know he's doing a tremendous job there. I must start by saying congratulations to all students who have matriculated into the various graduate programs of the faculty. You're here because you've done well in your first degree and you've also done well in your professional life. You should be proud of yourselves and I wish you much success on this journey. I started my graduate journey 20 years ago. It's so interesting when I was reflecting on when did I start my master's program? And it was 20 years ago. And I was wondering if, you know, did, did Prof Tennant and, and Dr. Vassiani know that? And they were making me do this presentation to celebrate 20 years of being here uh, since I started my graduate program. But my first day as a graduate student was on Tuesday, September 11, 2001. Do you remember what day that was? It was the day of 9-11. I remember walking on the second floor of the three-story building over by the, the, the older FSS, not really sure what the configuration is now. And I was having a conversation that morning with Dr. Christine Cummings about the planes that had flown into the World Trade Center that morning. My graduate life was off to a very historic start. I knew it was an important turning point in history. You could just feel it that day. But you too start off your graduate journey at another historic time in the country, in the region, and in the world. We're in the midst of a devastating global pandemic that has upended life as we know it. We see turmoil all over the world. 
political gridlock, a pandemic of crime too, and significant economic follow. And this is um, despite all of the gains that we have made before. Um, it is against this kind of unsettling yet historic backdrop that I frame my brief comments. Your theme today is innovate, inspire, and integrate. I will take each of these important concepts and relate them to my views on graduate studies. Innovate, ah, innovate. That word is used so often. <laughs> I somewhat rolled my eyes when I saw that in the theme. It seems to be in the theme for so many conferences and seminars. It's kind of like a little buzzword. But upon reflection, it is an important word. This pandemic demonstrates that we cannot continue with business as usual. We have to rethink so much of the status quo and rethink what we think we know. There's so much that isn't working. Our education system, our social safety programs, our economy, our public sector, even our internet access flow, digital. You know, we so often we have to say, you know, we have poor connections or my system isn't working because my connection isn't so great. A graduate student is focused on research. It is in graduate programs that you dig deeper into your discipline. The solutions for our problems will not come from people who talk much on social media, but the solutions lie in the work that you will do beginning as graduate students. As you embark on this journey, Think about how your work will provide innovative ways to look at problems that we face and start us in the way of rethinking and ultimately solving some of these pressing issues. Innovating is about challenging the current. It's about using new ideas, methods, even developing new products and services. You are the future leaders of our public service, of our businesses, our universities, and our civil society organizations. This is an exciting time to be a graduate student as there are so many questions to contemplate and to explore. And we will not get very far using some of the old frameworks that have led us to where we are. You should see your work and research as playing a critical part in the innovation required to solve our global problems. Integrate. I'm not sure um, what integrate means in the context of your theme, um, but you know, given this is a regional university and you know, there's been lots of discussions about um, regionalism and integration, I obviously have to say as an unapologetic regionalist that there's more research that needs to be done to explore new concepts of integration and also exploring what could integration look like for us and how do we achieve that? But when I think of integrate in the context of this presentation, I think about interdisciplinary integration. I strongly believe that the answers to many of our research questions will not be found solely in our narrow disciplines. It is in the intersection of the many social science disciplines that answers can be found. We therefore need to develop and deepen our social sciences toolkit as graduate students. And I say this all the time, that for me, I think one of the few disadvantages for me when I was a graduate student was that I didn't explore enough of other disciplines. I didn't do enough work in sociology and psychology, especially, and I find that those are the kinds of research papers that I like to read now and that have been helping me in terms of my own professional life. And so um, I stand in praise of social science generalists who understand many aspects of the social sciences and can synthesize, synthesize a plethora of data. We will not solve our problems with an understanding of just one area. I therefore suggest that faculty truly promote the value of social sciences generally 
and explain the value of this toolkit across a myriad of areas. And let me give you an example. One question that needs answering is why has our education system in Jamaica underperformed despite the high level of spending when we compare it to other countries? Jamaica spends more um, of its GDP. If we look at the spend in education, it's significantly uh, more than other countries at the same level of development as us. The answer isn't one solely about teaching or teacher quality or the schools and the plant. It's really a very complex question that in order for you to answer it, you'd have to pull on history, sociology, economics, political science. Also, I am amazed when I speak to individuals about vaccines that many of those who are hesitant make the same exact points. They have obviously bought into a line of thinking that is very clear, succinct, and easily articulated. How did we get here? The answer is best found in exploring literature across sociology, media, political science, and even areas outside of this faculty like history and geography. When I was looking at policies, and I've been a policymaker in the past, and I've worked on several government policies from divestment to diaspora policies and so on, I've had to pull on that toolkit, that integration of social sciences. I mean, where do you start when you're doing a policy? You have to start by doing a literature review. You have to understand what's there. You have to understand what has been done elsewhere in the world. And then you also have to look at the data in Jamaica. And of course, many times the data is missing, but you also have to use what data you have access to in order to develop these policies. And as you are doing that, I have found that, you know, you go in many different directions. You look at the economic literature, you look at the political science literature that is there. And in many instances, you look at other works that have been done elsewhere in order for you to understand nuance, context um, for your policy. And if you want your policies to be relevant, then you have to develop them within a particular framework. And that is always evidence-based understanding, global understanding, local dynamics. Um, I know in the private sector, for many of you, you're going to be working in the private sector. Um, just thinking about how you enter a new market. And I've had to work on entering new markets quite a bit um, in order to do that effectively. You have to understand international context. And I know a lot of my international relations training has helped me significantly in a lot of the work that I do on an international level. Um, understanding international context and history psychology in decision-making and how that may change across cultures um, and general economic principles are always very important. So as you do your research papers, I encourage you to explore academic work across different academic fields. They will give your papers even more richness, nuance, and relevance. And as you go into the public or private sector, keep in mind that you have developed a toolkit during your program that can serve you as you seek to be an innovative leader. Inspire. You are one of the few who has been chosen. And I'll say that again. You are one of the few who has been chosen. I know in Jamaica and in many other places, the majority of children born any year will never see the lecture rooms of a tertiary program. In fact, in Jamaica, the majority, a significant majority of students leave school with little qualifications. You are therefore indeed chosen in having been afforded an undergraduate degree and now an opportunity to begin a graduate program. I ask you, what are you going to do with this opportunity? What are you gonna do with this blessing? I believe that to whom much is given, much is expected. You are embarking on the journey of a chosen person. I believe that you must guard this opportunity and treat this responsibility with the respect that it deserves. It is not just about getting a higher post 
or a promotion at the end of this program, this is an opportunity to know more, to develop more, to stretch yourself. Our research paper is humbling and stressful and difficult. I know when I did my master's paper and when I did my PhD, that there were difficult days. There were days of, of um, writer's block. <laughs> there were days, I could tell you, when I hated my paper and I just wanted it to be done with and so that I could just move on with my life. <laughs> uh, it's not easy. There are going to be difficult days. A research paper, either master's or doctoral, is an opportunity to conduct research in areas that are important to your country, region, and world. It's an opportunity to add value to the academic discourse in many areas, and that is valuable. So even after all of the pain, you're going to end up saying, I'm very glad that I did this. And as I close, I want to leave you with two pieces of advice. I have so much more advice, but they only gave me 15 minutes. So <laughs> I have to be limited in, in, in that. The first bit of advice is to build relationships and assist in ongoing research projects being undertaken by faculty. When I was a graduate student, I'm thinking back to my master's program, I was a research assistant. I was a research assistant to Dr. Rapley. And he had this idea about doing a bit of work on the Jamaican economy. Why has it underperformed? And it was called the Jamaica Economy Project. And as a research assistant, I did a lot of research in relation to that question. But then I also got the opportunity to write up the proposal for the bigger work um, where he was seeking funding from um, private sector. Now, that Jamaica Economy Project eventually became the Caribbean Policy Research Institute, Capri, which I'm very happy that I was able to play a little role as a graduate student then. But when we were trying to get funding, I was able to go to some of the funding meetings. And in one of those funding meetings, I met a man who is now the Honorable Earl Jarrett. And he was one who was very interested in the project. I never saw him for many years. I mean, I left and I did a PhD and then I came back. And eventually I was in the public sector and he was a director for Jampro and that's how we ended up engaging again. And he invited me to JN. He said, you should come work for JN. And I remember you when you were just a graduate student. And that's how I ended up at the JN group, doing all of what I have done and being able to work on starting JN Bank and the UK bank, which is the first Caribbean bank um, to get authorized in the UK. Two of the highlights of my career. But where did they start? They started at UWE in the Faculty of Social Sciences with me just as a little research assistant. Where I am is therefore linked to my time as a graduate student and you too should make the best use of this time. You never know what's going to happen. The second bit of closing advice for me is for you to be open about the future. When I finished my master's program, I thought I was going to be either an academic or foreign service officer. I did become an academic briefly, but I've made policies in the office of the prime minister, work to attract foreign investment to Jamaica, work on programs to improve or business environment. I've also worked on developing the, as I told you, the new bank in Jamaica and then led the development of an establishment of the Caribbean's first bank in the UK. And I also just finished a national risk assessment for Jamaica, which is a key component of our attempts to remove ourselves from the gray list and the gray and black list that Jamaica has found itself on in relation to money laundering and terrorism financing. And I've been on several boards, both locally and internationally. I did not plan for any of these milestones, but I truly believe that the graduate work I did in this faculty has allowed me to be better in every sphere that I have worked.
it gave me a love of and respect for research and the importance of evidence-based policy policy setting and the development of business processes grounded in an understanding of how people think and make decisions. In conclusion, treat this time in your graduate program as sacred. It will be a time of tremendous growth. And as I said, there will also be many difficult days, but you will be better for all of these challenges at the end. I look forward to the breakthroughs that you will make personally and for our world. Please go forth and innovate, inspire, and integrate. Thank you. Many, many thanks to all our presenters who participated in today's graduate induction and welcome ceremony. I now invite Dr. Delroy Chevers to give his closing remarks. Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you are now motivated and I want to thank all who presented and thank you for tuning in. All the very best for your graduate journey. Thank you.